All right. Hey, everybody. Okay, so I've been struggling lately <laughs> at night with wanting chocolate and carbs. Um, I think it's because on my latest meal plan, um, we start to eat less towards the end of the day. Whenever I eat at the end of the day, I want chocolate. And pretty much every time I eat, I want chocolate. And for the most part, that happens. So my breakfast is chocolate and cherry recovery, right? Here's my... <laughs> chocolate chair recovery and then my lunch is a vegan chocolate shake <laughs> so naturally <laughs> this chocolate addict um, has a late afternoon chocolate peanut butter snack and I tend to want chocolate at night it's like my body wants chocolate every four hours <laughs> and so I've been struggling at night to stay on my nutrition plan so I figured I would grab my um, my shakes out and at least make, see it says balls. This is the shakes that I use for my balls. <laughs> and I'll tell you why in a second, it's a funny story. Um, I figured I'd make these. I put them in a container, I stick them in the freezer as my like rescue treat in case I need it, but not like as a planned snack. And I don't have any and I think that's why I'm struggling so hard because usually I grab these. And I'll tell you what's in them. Um, I started making them before because sometimes I make a really big mess and I didn't want to have to like touch the screen. So um, it starts with four scoops of vegan chocolate shake. Um, the reason why I use this bag only for balls is because it actually has no sweetener in it. Um, I had gotten this bag of shakes and I maybe drank three of them and I kept saying to myself something tastes off in my shake and so I got in touch with the creator Isabel and I was like Isabel my latest bag of Shakeology just tastes wrong I don't know what's wrong with it and so she said well send me the um I don't know the code the lot number right the lot number at the top of the bag and let me know um you know what that is and I'll send it to our development team so she did. She sent it over and within a day she got back to me and she says, we found out that they missed the stevia in that batch. And so um, it was very helpful so that they could do an email to anybody who had gotten that same lot number. And I asked my clients who had recently ordered in the same time as me. And so they resent me a brand new bag. But I kept this one on hand. I figured maybe I could use it for my balls. And I do because it actually tastes good. It, it's fine. So, um, so that's why I have that bag around. That's why I make these. So I use four scoops of the vegan chocolate just to keep these vegan. Um, and then I add one cup of oats, right? Um, not the quick cook ones, although you could probably use those, but the big ones, the old fashioned oats, um, Quaker, I don't know. And then I used, I didn't measure it, maybe a half a cup of peanut butter, um, as natural as you can make it, right? So I started using now the Smucker's peanut butter instead of my old favorite, Skippy, which is now not my old favorite anymore. Um, well, it's my old favorite. It's just not my favorite now. Now I use that Smucker's to keep it more natural. And then, um, so there's like a half a cup of that. And then I put like a handful of raisins and craisins in there um, just to get some sweetness throughout. And the last ingredient is a little bit of almond milk. So I've never had this happen. I think I used maybe like a half a cup to two thirds of a cup of almond milk. But Dana, one of the coaches on my team, she made these once and she was like, mine turned out like a mess. She's like, they didn't bind together. So I'm pretty sure maybe she used a little too much almond milk in there. And maybe that's why hers kind of just ended up like a bowl of wet stuff. I don't know. So if you can always add more if it's not wet enough, if there's a bunch of powder in the bottom. And so I just roll them into, I use my little, I don't know, ice cream scooper, cookie dough, a cookie dough scooper. I use it for meatballs <laughs> just so that they're uniform. I don't know if you're Italian, but uh, if there's a trick to uniform meatballs and it's not this thing, then uh, you got the trick. Um, so anyways, I'm just making these and... Um, and I was thinking like in silence <laughs> about our day and we, um, I took the boys golfing today. I got the four of us memberships um, to Beekman Golf Course up in, uh, I don't know, wherever they are. 
up there, uh, up the Taconic. And, um, and we were hitting balls today. I also paid for the, the $300 all you can golf range balls for the year because I know we'll be back there. And, um, I'm so thankful that because of my job, I can do that. I can spend the day with my father-in-law who's retired and my kids who I want to teach golf. And we were at lunch in the clubhouse and my father and the kids asked my father-in-law how long he had been golfing. Um, and it wasn't a jab at his golfing, <laughs> but, um, but he said, you know, only about like maybe five years or so. And then, uh, they looked to me and he asked me, how did you get into golf? And it's funny because it's a lot like, um, you know, like my study abroad experience. And so when I was in high school, I mean, I was the shyest person ever. I didn't talk to people I didn't know. And one day I went home and I said to my parents, I want to study abroad in Chile. And I did. And they were shocked because I was so shy. But I don't know. Something inside me said, do this. Do, take this challenge. Do it. And I did. And it was rough. Um, I met a lot of great people. I had an amazing experience, but I also had the experience that my host family didn't like me. I don't think it was me. They didn't seem to like Americans. <laughs> I don't know if they signed up for it to like get money. Um, but I changed families after a little while and, um, and my experience was great after that. But when I got back, I grew up in Hingham, Massachusetts, a 20,000 person white preppy town. When I got back from study abroad, I felt really different from people. I felt like they weren't very worldly. And I wanted to make sure that I had the opportunity to study abroad again. So when I looked for colleges, I looked for colleges where people studied abroad, where it was part of the curriculum and where I wouldn't feel so different from people when I came back. And so I found my school, Kalamazoo College in Kalamazoo, Michigan, where a good 80% of the kids study abroad and languages are big and arts are big and um, it was a D3 school so I was able to walk onto the softball team and um, and it wasn't my life and so when I got there I thought I was going to be a Spanish minor and I um, earned a few thousand dollars off of my tuition for a Spanish competitive scholarship and I tested like on the first week of school to see where I would start my Spanish classes, right? Because you have to get so many credits to be a minor. And I tested so high in the language because I had become fluent that I was going to have to take a lot of other classes like culture and society and art and politics of Latin America. And that was not what I was interested in. So I, hey, I figured that I would go outside of my, my comfort zone again and start from the bottom. And so I did, and I started with Chinese. And so, puppies, hey. So in college, I studied Chinese. And again, for in my junior year, I studied abroad in China. So outside my comfort zone, everything is different in China, right? So I studied in Beijing. They don't really speak any English. I couldn't even communicate with my roommate when I got there. Um, so she and I had to like, I mean, we worked, I was exhausted all the time, just trying to communicate all day with my roommate and learn this language that's so intensive. And when you stop studying it, you forget it. Um, I think I did impress our waiter on the cruise though, <laughs> when I started talking to him in Chinese. Um, but you know, it was another one of those times where like, I knew that my friends were all going to Spain and Ecuador and I would have had a lot of fun on study abroad there. I already knew the language, but I needed a challenge. Um, that's when I feel my best, and that's when I perform my best, is when I feel the, the challenge and when I'm told to rise up, right? Um, and where I want to rise to the top, that's when I start to work hard, and I'm, I'm motivated by that. And so I studied abroad in China. And so when I got back from study abroad in China, <laughs> I was like all like, I can do anything. And so for my senior year, right, I got to school a little bit early because my, my best friends and I, hey, 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 uh -uh. puppies, my best friends and I got a house and the lease started in August or something. So I went to school early and I went to go get a job on campus and part of the, the perk of working on campus is that they gave you free lunch in the summer. So I was at the cafeteria and, um, 
and I saw the golf team walk in, the girls' golf team walk in one day. And I was like, oh, hey, guys. Like, some of them I knew, you know, just from school. And uh, the one of the girls who had been on my softball team, she was the assistant coach. And they said, oh, we're starting our golf season today. We're having lunch, and then we're going down to have our physicals. And I was like, oh, that sounds like so much fun. I would love to learn golf. Like, I've done it a few times. And they were like, you should join the team. And I was like, can I? <laughs> They said, yeah, come on down. So I went back to my job where I was only on my lunch hour. And I said to Lee, I was like, do you mind if I like quit today? Because <laughs> I really want to go play golf and I really want to learn golf. And she was like, yeah, go ahead. I'm good. And so I did. And so that was one of those days where I just like found the courage to do something I had never done with all these girls who had played in high school and played. Um, and I hopped on the golf team that day. And I'm so glad I did because I got free instruction for months. I got to play a ton of rounds of golf. I got to learn etiquette. And I I just, I got to be around girls who were good at it. And so I was really excited about that. And so that's how I started to learn how to play golf. And then Jay and I, when we met, we used to go after work um, and play like nine or ten holes as much as we could squeeze in. And once we had the kids, we kind of like, that went downhill <laughs> and we started to only golf like maybe once or twice a season because um it's just a lot of time it's a lot of times a lot of money and we'd have to hire a babysitter or give my kids to the my in-laws for like six hours and so um so we just hadn't been golfing but four years ago when I started coaching like on the first day that I started coaching my coach said or I might have watched a training video that said make a list of all the things you want in life, like, like big, big goals. And I made this list and I got to go find that notebook. It's somewhere, my first notebook with all my old notes and stuff. And on the first page of that notebook, there's so many things. The one thing I know I still haven't gotten is the basketball hoop out in the, out in the driveway. Still want one of those. I've been asking Jay since my 30th birthday. And I think I just, what did I turn? 37? <laughs> So I don't have that still, but, and when I look back at this list, there's so many things on there that I wanted that are now my life. Um, I wanted to work from home. I wanted to be able to get a dog for Jay. We have two dogs. There were so many things on there that I wanted that now I have. Um, and then on top of that, one of the things on there was, um, to be on a golf league on a women's golf league. And it's something that still has just never kind of like been in my realm <laughs> with regards to timing of a golf league and the cost of a golf league. But um, this past winter, we found out that Beekman Golf Course was holding a special, an 50th anniversary special. And for $177 a person, you could get a three-year membership to the club. And so we jumped on it. And we secretly told all of our friends so that they would jump on it too. So that we would have our own little club of people who had memberships who could go. And so today was our first day going. So we have my father-in-law got a membership too. And so we signed up all four of us. So JJ's a golf member and Jackson's a golf member. They got their cards today. And um, my father-in-law and Jay are too. And so we took the boys today to the range and to the putting green. What? Let's see. Ooh, that's fast. And we had a ball. And so we are now going to be um, going up there. And while I was there, I asked them about the ladies' leagues. So I'm not sure that the timing is going to still work out right now for me. But I'm getting closer, step by step. And, um, and it's this lifestyle that's afforded me all these opportunities now. And I'm really excited for it. But um, nothing happens in life if you don't take chances and you don't try things that are so outside your comfort zone. If anything in my life, all these experiences, um, taking a job in New York City where I was not qualified for the job. And when I showed up on day one, the boss was a little annoyed by that. But I promised him I was a quick learner and I grew into that. And, um, and I proved myself. And so if you keep reaching higher... And if you just go for those things that are beyond your comfort zone and are beyond your realm of 
of possibility, then they'll just become your norm someday. But if you never take those chances and you never push yourself, nobody else is going to push you. I'm telling you that. Except for me. <laughs> I'll push you. If you want to push, coach, you need me. Okay? My best friend knows that. I was yelling at her all day today. Um, so anyways, uh, I'm done. Thank you for hanging with me. So these are going in the freezer. Okay? These are not meant to all be eaten in a week. And so if they're going to last, they need to be frozen. And so I only take them out when I need them. Hopefully they will help me stay on track. I'm still trying to decide. I actually had a moment today when I was like, maybe I'm just going to pull out of this bikini competition because I'm really lacking self-control right now. But that would not be very good of me to quit. So uh, instead, I'm going to do all my things. I'm going to try and get plenty of rest so that I'm not like exhausted and turning to food. Um, when I feel I'm uh, hungry or tired, I'm going to turn to water and possibly my energize. <laughs> um, and I'm going to do my best to check in with my crew, all you guys and my groups when I don't feel my willpower. So hopefully with your support, I can gain new resolve and, uh, with these chocolate treats. <laughs> um, so if you make these and if you need the recipe, ask me again. It's on my YouTube also. If you look up like Jill Ortiz vegan Shakeology balls or vegan chocolate treats or something like that, vegan chocolate balls, um, you can find it on YouTube also. But ask me if you need help. Um, put them in the freezer, take them out, put them in the microwave for like 15 seconds and they taste like a warm brownie. So, and they're super healthy. Uh, so that's it. It's like eating a vitamin every day, right? And if you don't know what's in this stuff, so worth it. Chia, pea, sacha inchi, flax, quinoa, rice, oat. These things help build lean muscle and reduce cravings, which is what I need, right? They also have antioxidants, um, camu camu, acerola cherry, bilberry, lithium berry, goji berry, green tea, uh, luohangua, pomegranate and rose hips, which all have antioxidant properties that help fight free radical damage. They've got a super greens phytonutrient blend, moringa, chlorella, spinach, kale, matcha. These help support health and vitality. Um, adaptogen blend, ashwagandha, astragalus, cordyceps, maca, maitake, reishi, shisandra, and chaga mushrooms. And these it, uh, these are my favorite. Adaptogens have traditionally been used to help the body adapt and respond to the effects of stress. So it's kind of like whatever your body stressors are, it goes in and like fixes them. Um, and then the pr proprietary pre and probiotic digestive enzyme blend, uh, yacon root, chicory root, bacillus coagulans, amylase, cellulase, lactase, glucoamylase, alpha galactosidase <laughs> invertase. So these are naturally occurring. They're not chemicals. Naturally occurring probiotics, prebiotics, fiber, and enzymes that help nutrient absorption and support regularity and healthy digestion. And that for me is the biggest thing because I serve, I struggled um, with constipation my entire life until four years ago when I started drinking this stuff. So for a few bucks a day, this stuff keeps me super healthy and it helps with my nightly chocolate cravings. So that's it. I'm done. This was probably really long. <laughs> Thanks for hanging in there. <laughs> See ya. <laughs> Let me know if you have anything exciting to tell me. Did you study abroad? Do you like these things? Have you ever made them? What else? Do you speak Chinese? <laughs> uh, do you golf? Does anybody want to go golfing with me sometime? While the kids are in school, <laughs> Jay's at work, um, we could do some business from the golf course. <laughs> Let me know. All right. All right. See ya.